the Board of Education, and I am thrilled to welcome you to our annual State of the Schools Address. We have a wonderful evening of celebration ahead of us, including some personal reflections from several Heights High students. To start off tonight's presentation, our musical entertainment is none other than the award-winning Heights High School Men's Barbershoppers. The group was crowned the 2024 Next Generation Barbershop Junior Chorus Plateau A Champions in New York City at the Barbershop Harmony Society's Conference this January. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome, under the direction of Mr. Jesse Lang, the Heights High Barbershoppers. If I 
One, two, three. Da 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 da. As long as I'm singing, there's a bell up in my brain that's ringing. No, it's making a crazy ding dong 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 dong. And if my friends don't desert me, then there's nothing in the world can hurt me. As long as I'm singing my song, my song just give me. Rhythm. But um, ba bum bum As long as I'm singing, then the world's all right and everything's swinging. Long as I'm singing my song, you know that. And making music is more to me than a pleasure. Cause me and music, we go, we go together like notes in a measure. Long as I'm singing, then the world's alright and everything's swinging. Long as I'm singing my, long as I'm ringing my, long as I'm singing, I love to sing it to ya. I'm shouting hallelujah. Sing my song. Hello, my name is Tyler Wilson. I am an eighth grade honors student at Monticello Middle School. Heights, Heights schools have given me so many different opportunities that have made positive impacts in my, lives, in my life. I have met so many inspirational teachers that I am so proud to be in the schools with them. Um, I've I have had the pleasure of meeting Superintendent Liz Kirby at an event called Superintendent Cadre. It is composed of eighth, sixth, and seventh graders, and they have a sit-down lunch with Superintendent Kirby and go over different changes that they would like to see in the school. So far, the Superintendent Cadre has made so many different changes in the school that it is amazing. Um, sorry. At the, end of, at the end of the meeting, I was recognized by Superintendent Liz Kirby with a positive referral. And I did not know that later on that it would turn into this. <laughs> but now, here to deliver the 2024 State of Schools Address, Superintendent Liz Kirby. Thank you, Tyler. Um, I want you all to know that when I met Tyler this past fall, it took me about 30 seconds to know for sure that I was meeting a future president of something. The United States, a company, let me just tell you, Tyler was so focused and serious in the meeting. And you know, we were talking about everything from lunch, it, lunch always comes up in cadre, to cell phones, to trips. But every question, Tyler was, he just took it so seriously and I was so impressed. Um, and so when we were putting this together, I hate to say this, my high school students, but Tyler was the first student that I thought of that I wanted to participate in this because I really think he represents the greatness of our district. So thank you. 
Uh, my name is Liz Kirby. I am the proud superintendent of the Cleveland Heights University High School District. Um, here tonight to talk about the accomplishments that have happened over the past year in our district. Before we start, I want to thank our student musicians who shared their talents with us tonight. So thank you to our barber shoppers who we, we see their names here. Um, I, I know that uh, the students have been traveling all around. They were recently in New York. Um, and really, I could have just listened to them all night, to be honest. We could, it could have just been a concert. But I do want to share some of the accomplishments of our district. So thank you, and thank you, Jesse, for uh, your leadership of the group. Um, speaking of Heights musical talent, I always say Cleveland Heights is every, literally everywhere, literally every year, everywhere, not just the Kelseys. Um, did you see the Heights grad who took home a Grammy on Sunday night? Saw that? So... Neil Smith, class of 1991, is a drummer for Imani Wins, which won Best Classical Compendium. This group actually performed for our IMD students last year. So I just thought, how appropriate for the Grammy winner to be someone associated with our IMD department. It makes perfect sense, because we're known for music. So let's congratulate Neil again, please. I also want to take a moment to recognize local elected officials and community partners joining us tonight. Um, as public servants and those who serve the community, uh, you guys know that these jobs are all day, all night, on the weekends, um, and at all hours. And it's, I am proud to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with leaders who so support our students and our staff and our families. So I'm just going to ask you to kind of stand up and wave. Um, our state school board member, Meryl Johnson. Meryl Johnson is here tonight. <laughs> University Heights Mayor Michael Dillon Brennan. <laughs> Cleveland Heights City Council member Tony Kuda. <laughs> Cleveland Heights Mayor Mayor Khalil Seren. <laughs> University Heights Council member Brian King. From the Director of Education, uh, the Director of Education at Dumbama Theater, Carrie Williams. Is Carrie Williams here in the back? Yes. Uh, from Noble Neighbors, we have Cynthia Johnston. Cynthia. Uh, we also have Tiffany Scruggs, who is not only a parent, but also is the Vice President of Community Access for Greater Cleveland Food Bank and also the executive director of that beautiful, wonderful, famous uh, resource center that we are going to model for our resource center. Looking forward to learning from you. Um, also joining us tonight, I know I saw Krista Hawthorne. Krista Hawthorne is in the house. So I'm going to pause with Krista. Um, first, we, I want to personally thank you, Krista, for your genuine and passionate love for the schools, for the students, and for the community. Um, it's hard to believe that you're going to be retiring at the end of this year from reaching heights. Um, but I have never been in a meeting where you were not always thinking about what is best for our schools, what's best for our students, what's best for our staff, what's best for our parents, um, and the community as well. Um, and you've been there for the, the fun conversations, the hard conversations, the thought-provoking conversations, the short board meetings, the long board meetings. You've been at all of those. Um, so thank you so much for your passion. You know, I remember when we were working on um, getting the music camp going and Krista saw the numbers coming in, she reached out to me and said, we got to do something. So it was because of her push that we were able to make sure that we were having kids participate in the camp because post pandemic it was really challenging. So just an example of the work you do. We are gonna miss you, but we know you, we, we will still have you working with us. Are there any other elected officials that I may have missed? Davida, you look like a student. Davida Russell, Cleveland Heights City Council. You're gonna to have to introduce yourself. Please stand and tell me who you are. Jim Petrus, nice to meet you. All right, thank you for being here. 
Michelle Weiss. Michelle Weiss. Was she here earlier? And Sherry Sachs from University Heights. Well, you, you did, maybe have, were here earlier. I know some people came in early and then, um, then uh, left before the program started. So um, in addition to these elected officials, I would be remiss not to acknowledge and of course introduce and thank our board members. Uh, our president, Jody Serini. <laughs> Vice President, Malia Lewis. <laughs> One of our newer members, Gabe Crenshaw. <laughs> Dan Hines. And another newly elected board member, Phil Tremble. You guys know how hard this group works. They are everywhere. Um, they are always uh, trying to be creative and thinking how we can push the envelope to provide the best uh, for our students. I am just really blessed to have a group of leaders who I can work with in partnership, uh, who's who have wonderful values that align with my values and the district and the school's values as well. So thank you all for your work. Um, and I'm looking forward for our new members to many, many opportunities to collaborate. Um, I also wanna thank our teachers um, and staff and administrators who are here. So I'm gonna ask any teachers, and I see all the principals here, but we also have some teachers here as well, to please stand. I know you're tired, but please stand. It's only Wednesday. I have, I have such respect for um, what our staff who are in schools every day with our students do. Um, it is amazing, it is exhausting. Um, and I love that in the midst of wonderful things or challenging things, our teachers and our leaders always have a smile on their face. They have great perspective. Uh, they collaborate well together. They share ideas and resources. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. I will try to be brief. I was gonna go a couple hours, but I'll cut that back because I do know you do have school early in the morning. All right, so you'll recall that we started a tradition in 2020 of coming up with a yearly theme to set the tone for a new school year. So to develop this theme, we do go through an intentional process at the end of every year. We ask our staff what their vision is for the school community, what do they need to realize that vision? What skills? Um, so we went through this process again last summer, and our belief theme from the 22-23 school year still resonated. And so we kept that theme from this year. Dialing it up a little bit, we're focusing more, more than ever on the great power of collective efficacy. Studies have shown that when teachers and staff believe that through their collective effort, they can accomplish a goal, they tend to accomplish it. And when we believe in our students, and they know that we believe in them, they accomplish their goals too. Beyond that, we must believe in our community and believe in ourselves. Yes, there are challenges. Yes, we are in challenging times. But if we all work together, we can deliver on our mission and our vision. And to remind you, our mission, our mission is to provide a challenging and engaging education to prepare our students to become responsible citizens and succeed in college and career, whatever their choice is of their pathway. Our vision, and our vision is unique. You know, not every district has a vision that talks about diversity and equity, right? We just have to say that. Our vision is that our schools will educate students by embracing diversity ensuring equitable experiences, and fostering outstanding teaching and learning to develop academically prepared critical thinkers who contribute positively and compete successfully in the world. And even though this mission and vision was developed with this most recent iteration of our strategic plan, if you look at what our current students are doing, what our recent graduates are doing, and even our graduates from 10, 20, 30, 40 years out, those principles really shine strong. 
you can go anywhere in the world and meet an alum from Heights, especially Heights High, and they are generally leading something, disrupting something, or forging a path. That is the spirit of the Heights, and that's what we really seek to build in our students. So our work is, is spelled out in our 2026 strategic plan, which has five key targets. The first, 100% of our third graders reading at or above their identified grade level. We know that third grade is critical in a student's educational journey, and we are making great strides towards this goal. Second, 80% of students showing proficiency on state assessments. Though we know that the state of Ohio has used the assessment system in lots of interesting ways, we also know that it's important that our students are prepared as they graduate from our schools and we continue to work on that readiness for college and career success. Third, 90% of our students having course success in algebra by the end of ninth grade. Again, ninth grade algebra being one of those key milestones and a gatekeeper for higher level mathematics having significant implications for equity and access. Fourth, 95% of our students graduating in four years. This is a central outcome for students, and we know that high school graduates are more likely to be employed, have significantly higher incomes, and better health and life expectancy outcomes. And then finally, 90% of our students pursuing college or a viable career pathway. We want to make sure our students have a, a concrete post-secondary plan as they graduate and are on track to college or a high-wage career. It's becoming more and more evident that all students will need post-secondary training to achieve success after high school. So all of these, uh, these targets, but also our strategies around this are outlined in our strategic plan book that is found on our website. These are our five overarching goals to guide our direction, but I wanna share some highlights from the past year that fit into our district's five goals. This year, our students will be helping me. So, first to share what goal one and her Heights education mean to her is Heights sophomore, Jayla Scruggs. Good evening, Tiger Nation. I would like to thank Superintendent Kirby for inviting me to speak as a member of the student cadre body to highlight goal one of our district's strategic plan. Goal one is to ensure every student graduates ready to pursue college and career. My name is Jayla Scruggs. I'm a 10th grader who is very proud to attend Cleveland Heights High School, and I am currently on the path to success successfully graduate in 2026. I have attended the district's schools my entire school career. Objective one is to make sure at least 95% of students successfully graduate in four years. Cleveland Heights High School has afforded me the opportunity to take AP courses to keep me challenged in class and connect to peers with similar learning styles. Cleveland Heights faculty has provided, provided career prep course opportunities for my family and I to select from as I consider possible career paths. Under objective two, that all teachers will efficiently use instructional strategies and techniques, the staff here work to ensure various curriculum is offered and additional support is available as needed. My mom always reminds me that it's okay to ask for help and the staff at Cleveland Heights High School make it very easy to do so. Staff have demonstrated being supportive outside of the traditional classroom setting, which benefits students in many ways. I am also a student athlete, and teachers have been helpful while I learn to manage practice in the classroom. Objective three is that teachers will review students' performance to improve outcomes. One important example in my school career is a higher education preparation course I'm enrolled in called AVID. AVID always highlights where we are as a 2026 cohort and what steps we need to take to improve as an overall class. Along with that, during our expectation assemblies, they show overall test scores, attendance, and passing grades to help us recognize where we are lacking and how to make improvements. Every morning, our principal, Dr. Town, states, a diploma in every hand, a plan in every head, and a purpose in every heart to encourage students to thrive. Currently, I have a 4.4 GPA, and I'm on the path to proudly <laughs> hey. 
and I am on the path to proudly represent the Tiger Nation community as the district has a number of examples of its students being successful after they graduate. I look forward to successfully completing my last two years in the Cleveland Heights University High School District, and I thank you all for your time. <laughs> I think her mother's in the room. Oh. <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Thank you, Jayla. So, to add to Jayla's personal experience, I want to share some highlights related to goal one. First is our four year graduation rate. The class of 2022 was 88.9% up from last year and greater than the state average of 87.3%. This is our highest four-year graduation rate since 2019. But better than that, better than that, the preliminary four-year graduation rate for the class of 2023, which you'll see on the fall report card, is estimated at 90.6%. This rate will be finalized when the state report card is released in September. It is the highest four-year graduation rate that we have seen since 2011. Wow. And so I want to thank the high school team, the counselors, the teachers, uh, Dr. Gould, Mr. Swaggart, Allison Berg, a big Sharon Roller, Taylor Smith, a big old team. Um, of administrators and teachers who really worked hard. Dr. Williams really worked hard um, on this. And anyone who has known the district knows we've been working on a four-year graduation rate for a very long time. 90.6% is a huge celebration. The class of 2023 reported 14.5 million in scholarships and were accepted to nearly 200 post-secondary institutions and the military. 19 senior athletes earned $750,000 in college scholarships for seven different sports, signing 16 letters of intent to different colleges and universities. Our seniors helped lead four sports teams to take the title of Lake Erie League Conference Champion. Today was National Signing Day for 2024, and we celebrated six student athletes who signed letters of intent listed on the screen. Congrats to these young people. Their hard work and commitment to excellence will no doubt continue to pay off as they continue their talents in college next year. We're also seeing a significant increase in our third grade uh, reading proficiency, one of our key targets. So when we look at the fall, this fall's OST, because our third graders start to test early, uh, we have 46% of our students who are already proficient in reading. That is a 10% jump from last year. That's a celebration. 57 members of the Heights High class of 2023, 24, and 25 were recognized by the College Board as AP scholars for high marks on their AP tests. And we have seven Heights High School seniors that have been named National Merit Scholars. That is Laura Boucher, Marcus Holland, Mason Spieth, Natalie Beer, uh, and Sean Egbert, who are commended students. Nico Bell and Caleb Green are Merit Scholar semifinalists and have the opportunity to advance to the finalist level and qualify for the National Merit Scholarship. And we'll find out those results later this month. Last May, we had 76 new members inducted into National Honor Society and International Tech Honor Society, we rec which recognizes our high achieving career tech students, 12 Heights High students came into the ranks. Heights students can now earn an associate's degree by the time they graduate from Heights High, reducing the amount of time they would spend in college and <laughs> the amount of money they would spend on college by half. We announced the associate's degree pathway in late 2022, and we currently have 33 freshmen enrolled in the associate's degree pathway. <laughs> this is thanks to our partnership with Cuyahoga Community College and the leadership of Bob Swaggart, our Director of College and Career Readiness. This, fund, this program is funded with Gear Up Funds and College Credit Plus funding. 
Further, we have 159 students who participated in the College Credit Plus program this past fall. This is a total of 480 college credits, no cost to them. So what does this mean from a, from a financial perspe perspective? This is $60,000 in tuition saved. This is just one, one semester. We just wanted to highlight this. $60,000 in tuition saved because students were able to take these courses on our campus. Um, and since the fall semester of 2021, enrollment in CCP has more than tripled. And now you recall that the Heights High Academic Challenge Team won the national, the News 5 Nordstrom Academic Challenge Championship in the spring, and they went on to represent Heights at the national level. And if you guys remember last spring, they had the highest score ever in the history of Academic Challenge. It was a very exciting game. All right. So next we're gonna go on to goal two. I'm gonna ask, I can't believe it, Heights High senior, Deshara Turner, to come and talk about her Heights experience and specifically, and also, the Career Tech program. Phew. Um, <laughs> I can't say how many times I've probably seen y'all faces and done this throughout the years, but good evening. Um, like Superintendent Kirby said, I am a senior at Cleveland Heights High School, and I'm here to talk about my CTE and goal two of our strategic plan. So I am in the clinical health career CTE at my high school, which is basically our nursing program. We, get, we do receive a lot of benefits being in this program. It has already given me insight into the healthcare field, which I will be pursuing in college. Um, we have learned about medical terminology, safety and infection control, patient-centered care, labs, skills, things to just like the courses of healthcare so far. Um, I have learned that from the program, although it may seem lengthy, it is very <laughs> beneficial for us. Um, all of its informative and tailored information has tailored to our future aspirations into healthcare. So many of us will be continuing into nursing and medical field. We do receive scholarships and intern oppor internship opportunities that we do over the summer and we may receive payment and even more experience than obtained in the classroom setting. We practice our skills and our labs on each other as a simulation for patients for when we do take our STNA test in March. We usually practice on our mannequins for the more invasive procedures like needles, suturing, catheters, dressings, um, hair and nail care. Um, initially when joining CTE, I thought it was just an extracurricular elective that was only a simulation of a lecture in a college classroom. I wasn't fully aware of all the benefits that come along with being in these CTE programs. But I can earn college credit, hands-on experience, training, shadowing opportunities, and even certificate, certificates and licensures. So I will be certified in CPR and have my STNA license by the end of March. Um, <laughs> being in these CTE programs and receiving all of these kinds of certifications and licenses are free of charge. So it is saving us hundreds to thousands of dollars for training and opportunities to shadow and work in these healthcare settings. And I really do promote the program. Um, I am happy that I joined this career tech out of all the other options out there were, which are great. And I'm happy to say they are run by amazing teachers who work hard every day to make sure we can get the experience that we want for future careers. Um, now to talk about goal two of our strategic plan. I believe that goal two of the strategic plan is off to a strong start. I see both strengths and opportunities for improvement that I think both parties, students and staff, can improve on and have to contribute to meet one another in the middle. Teachers are still trying to reach out to our students who are struggling and some students simply are afraid to take that step toward asking for the help that they need. I think that we all must be willing to build relationships because that is how we all succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Deshara. So sharing some highlights from goal two. Uh, since 2022, our staff and equity task force members have been participating in an intensive training led by Integrated Comprehensive Systems for Equity. 
We have learned about the history of marginalization in the United States educational systems. We've studied the data on how biases negatively affect student outcomes. And we've developed action items to advance our district into a proactive, asset-focused institution. The training di ties directly to the ongoing implementation of our equity policy. This year, building leadership teams have been developing equity non-negotiables based on their school's data. And, that, and this has set the stage for transformative positive change. School attendance also continues to be a priority. We launched our Every Minute, Every Minute Counts campaign this year, and buildings have been offering students creative incentives for coming to school each day and on time. For example, our options program took two students to a Cavs game for having perfect attendance, and you see uh, that experience here. Each of our schools have also found opportunities to support students' social emotional well-being. Boulevard's PTA president extraordinaire, Chandra Ford, created, this is awesome, you have to see this, a lunchtime enrichment series, it's like being in college, called Lunch Bunch. You can go to art, you can go to dance, you can play chess, you can do yoga. So you can eat, and then after you eat, you can go to your little activity. The kids love it, they're really into it. It's a great way to break the day up as well. I mean, Chandra worked really hard with partners and the staff there to bring this opportunity to students. Heights High, uh, Allison Craig was named the state's 2023 Social Worker of the Year last year by the Ohio School Social Work Association. She's been a leader in this field and has led professional development around mental health first aid, trauma-informed care during the pandemic, and social emotional toolkit. We also continued our Tiger Camp this past summer where we had 430 preschool through fifth grade students in this very building, in addition to nearly 300 sixth to 12th graders. We had 110 students in the, in the Summer Gear Up or Educational Talent Search Program, um, and we also had many other enrichment and leadership camps. All three of our schools, preschools, um, retained their five-star rating. This is the highest possible rating of a preschool program in Ohio. It always has a very long waiting list, um, but they are really just wonder wonderful spaces of love, but also growth for our youngest learners. Garrity Elementary and Monticello Middle School are 2023 recipients of the Ohio PBIS Bronze Recognition Award. And if you go to any of our schools, you will hear about PBIS, you will see PBIS in place. It's an important framework to help us positively support our students towards consistently good academic attendance and citizenship choices. Roxborough Elementary School second grade teachers, Melissa R.G. and Malik Daniel are teaching students that changing the world starts right now. As part of a recent IB unit, the two students focused on food insecurity in their neighborhoods and students spent two weeks collecting more than 500 pounds of donations for the Greater Cleveland Food, food Bank. And then finally this fall, we had the Heights High musical, The Adams Family, which featured students from multiple grade levels and showed wonderful talents. Uh, moving on to goal three, I would like to invite up Heights High Junior, Josiah Wiley. Good evening. <laughs> Before I came to CHUH, I attended a school where my friends came from various communities across the greater Cleveland area. However, during my sixth grade year, I expressed to my mother that I wanted to, that I wanted to go somewhere closer to home where I could build a community. After, after visiting Heights High Middle School at Wiley, I knew that Cleveland Heights was where I wanted to be and could cultivate a supportive community around me. Now, as a junior at Heights High, I can confidently say that being part of CHUH community has been very beneficial to me. Goal three focuses on welcoming family and community members as equal partners in student learning. I've seen this goal in action through after-school programs like Open Doors Academy. ODA provides a supportive space and offers a safe space for students after school. Joining ODA has helped me become more organized and offers a safe 
and, and offers a space to complete my assignments before engaging in other activities, which has been beneficial for me as a student. Additionally, ODA organizes events like field trips, college tours, and family events like Thanksgiving dinner and events that gets our entire family involved. As an athlete, I'm constantly engaged to excel both on the field and in the classroom. And the district provides support in both areas. Access to resources like the Metro Health Center has been valuable to me. I have been able to access the center to address a health issue related to sports thanks to the district creating this facility. I didn't, I didn't have to miss school or practice to get medical attention that I needed. It's a great feeling knowing that the health center and its staff are here if I need assistance. As I approach senior year, I'm filled with anticipation about becoming an alumni of this exceptional district and contributing to this vibrant community as a, as a valuable resource. Thank you, Josiah. So sharing some highlights from goal three, and Josiah mentioned Metro Health. Uh, Metro Health continues to provide our students with basic health care services right here at school for all grade levels. We had a ribbon cutting in early 2023 for the Wellness Center. And just a reminder, because we know we will be sharing this widely, anyone can sign up for Metro Health. If you have another health care provider, Signing up to Metro Health will not replace them. It's just an additional health care opportunity. So please, uh, we really want all of our families to sign up so that they have access to that support. Um, we also launched, uh, well, we actually launched this year, a community learning center at Oxford Elementary School. A CLC is a strategy in which schools expand partnerships to provide academic health and social services. Um, family engagement, youth and, community in, youth and community development. Several hundred Oxford students can now access health and wellness care, after school enrichment, and fun family events right at the school. They have events for students, they have events for families, they have events for the community. Um, at Noble, we have 250 students who participated in after school enrichment programs last year, and both locations have expanded their partnerships with local organizations like Lake Erie Inc., Family Connections, the Heights Libraries, and the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. We have, some, we have quite a partner in the Greater Cleveland Food Bank. The annual Heights High Family Academy was held in September. The theme was diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And ICS led a deep dive session with family, students, staff, and partners to strengthen how we lead, plan, and collaborate in support of student success. This is a part of the Equity Ally Academy series that engaged our community in equity work. So if, if you came to the homecoming parade, you saw the winner this year was Fairfax, who created a magical school bus uh, led by the PTA. Uh, Fairfax social worker Edie Fiala worked with principal Dr. Walker and IB coordinator Leslie Garrett to organize a stuff the bus collection of gently used clothing. So not only did they win, but they also used that um, support, used that beautiful bus for support. Donations were given to Share What You Wear, a project of the National Council of Jewish Women. They did take the title from the transportation team, I just have to say that. On January 31st, in partnership with our district PTA council and Shaker in South Euclid Lindhurst Schools, we also held here an online safety event. Um, and we had more than 80 attendees learning from the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force about best practices for keeping their kids safe alone. I want to share that this was the brainchild of parents who came together and talked about really wanting to know more about uh, safety online. The High Schools Foundation. The district's fundraising partner celebrated its seventh anniversary this fall. They have raised more than $1.6 million in support for classroom grants, scholarships, after school programs, transportation, and engagement. More than 60 scholarships went to the class of 2023 from the foundation, and they also added two new scholarships. This past fall, we had nine new alumni inducted in the Hall of Fame. Um, and their graduation year spanned from 1940 to 2002. Over the last year, the foundation has secured funding for additional mental health programming and assistance for families in need. 
The foundation has begun developing its three-year strategic plan, focusing on financial growth and alumni outreach. And of course, Heights fans celebrated last year the Kelsey Bowl in style, thanks to the foundation's One Tiger Nation t-shirts sold all over the world. Our communications department also earned the best of the best award for the electronic, the electronic quality profile in 2022 from the Ohio School Public Relations Annual Awards. Uh, a student from the class of 2023 won the best of the best in the student video category for her short animated video, Your Opinion of Me is Not My Responsibility, that's the name of the video. And Chrissy Dietrich Gallagher was named the OSPRA Friend of Education for 2023. The Heights Magazine in the fall for 2022, the fall winter issue, was awarded the mark of excellence. And the department also was awarded honorable mention for the 2026 strategic plan poster by the National School Public Relations Association. As Kennedy Brown comes up to talk about goal four, I must thank Kathan Cavanaugh, our supervisor of community of communications, who is also the annual executive producer of two big events. It's just like the Oscars. State of our schools is one. State of our schools, well, there's actually State of our schools graduation, end of the year staff awards. Um, and also convocation as well. So thank you for always writing wonderful words for me um, to say in these events, but also to, for pulling all this together. So now on to goal four, I'm gonna turn it over to Roxborough Middle School, Kennedy, who also when I met, equally impressed, I don't know what it is about middle school, high school students, you guys might have to step it up a little bit, but they came, when I went to Roxborough, I had a group of kids who had a list of things that they wanted to talk to me about. And I was very impressed with their thoughtfulness, their ideas, and their courage, just to kind of share what was on their hearts. So, Kennedy, turning it over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kennedy Brown. Um, I go to Roxborough Middle School. I'm an eighth grader. Um, I have been a part of the Quadre. Uh, it's, it's very good. Um, we've talked about a lot of um, like issues in our school and the superintendent has always been very open-minded about what we have to say and she has changed many things for us to you know, adjust but also be more comfortable. So this goes a lot about goal four. Goal four is about the teachers and staff of Cleveland Heights and how they heavily impact the lives of us students who enroll here. What I and everyone look for in a teacher and staff is security and most specifically support. This relates to me as a student because I have met teachers who have supported me and looked after me during my educational journey. Teachers and staff are the ones that we see constantly in our lives. It takes just one to truly impact you and make you feel like you aren't alone to make you feel that an individual outside of home cares for you and your education, one who wishes you the best in growing and learning and who would support you. Oh, lost here. Uh, because of their abilities to help and guide us through our paths, it's quite evident that the teachers who had stayed here through thick and thin take pride in their job. We all see that school is not such an easy environment to adapt to. And even for them, it's not easy for them at all. But they didn't quit because you can tell that this is their passion. And if it wasn't, they wouldn't be here as long. They wouldn't give us the support that, they, that, they, that we need. They wouldn't spend majority of their time here to educate. They love what they do. It isn't a time, but it, it, isn't, it isn't a waste of time, but a time that's, that, that they spend doing what they love and knowing how to do it well. Being a staff and a teacher is not easy, but if it weren't for them, how would we be able to develop skills and understand the basics of education? A crucial part of life is to be educated. We need them for that. Heights is a diverse school with variations of culture and brilliant-minded individuals. That's what we stand for. Students, teachers, and staff can learn and try and understand one another. Learning from each other is what makes the foundation of our school beautiful with the security and support of our teachers and staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. 
Thank you, Kennedy. So in 2019, our HR department, Human Resources, launched a program called Grow Your Own. They work to identify classified employees interested in pursuing teacher certification and provided them with scholarships to Cleveland State University. Last year, 11 employees were, award were awarded a combined total of $41,000 in scholarship money to pursue their educational degrees from CSU. We had two teachers who were designated as master teachers by the Ohio Department of Education, and four successfully renewed their designation in 2023. We celebrated them during this year's convocation. Our HR team has implemented inclusive interviewing and hiring techniques to establish and strengthen equitable practices. And also in the Heights, we help other leaders grow. This year we have Bright Fellows, Ben Collis and Shayla Evezi, who are serving year-long school leadership residencies at Canterbury and Noble, shadowing building principals Dr. Erica Wickton and Mr. Patrick Carpenter. More than 700 schools, including our schools, have received grant funding from the state to install security upgrades. We received $1 million, and from that, we, we upgraded or provided security cameras, upgraded video monitoring systems, exterior lighting, window film, portable radios, attendance scanners, and cybersecurity software systems. More than 100 staff members have been fully trained in threat assessment, and teams are functioning in each building. This is a process that we have in place to identify potential security risks and to prevent safety issues. Our, district new our district's new compliance officer, Sean Patton, has been visiting all of our schools to share age-appropriate information with students about Title IX and what it means to have positive and healthy interactions with peers. He also has provided that training to staff. This year, we also finally adopted a new dress code for students that went in effect this fall. Uh, we had a draft dress code that was developed and we had deliberation from students, teachers, administrators, families, district staff, leaders, board members. Um, this, the dress code includes minimum and only necessary restrictions on the exercise of students' taste and individuality. For the second year in a row, we received the Auditor of State Award with distinction. Giving, this is given to local governments and school districts upon the completion of a clean financial audit. And just so you know, only about 3% of Ohio school districts received the award in 2023. Additionally, for the 22nd straight year, ASBO International has awarded CHUH its Certificate of Excellence in Financial Reporting Award for having met the program's high standards of financial reporting and accountability. We were also recognized for its annual comprehensive financial report for fiscal year 2022. We continue to ma maintain a strong financial picture. ESSER funds have really helped in this perspective, uh, and we have used those funds for academic and mental health supports, technology, continuity of services, and those funds have allowed us to extend our levy cycle. This past school year, we completed nearly $3 million in facilities projects at Noble, uh, Noble Elementary School and also at Milliken. We have a 10-year plan for permanent improvement, and we will be hearing more about this in an upcoming work session. Our food, food service partner has served over 900,000 meals um, in the 22-23 school year. Um, this is provided by AVI, our food service vendor, and this is all at no cost to families thanks to our participation in the community eligibility program. We know nationally there's this conversation about schools, students now having to pay for lunch, uh, but because we have put this application in, all of our students um, can have access to lunch without having to pay for it or have to identify themselves um, as, you know, fiscally where they are. So that is a wonderful thing. Our information technology team completed the second half of their, their technology upgrades, and now all of our elementary schools have those beautiful smart flat panel displays. We also de deployed more than 300 Chromebooks to our third graders using an in-cart model. And in this school year, the department has completed more than 2,300 staff technology help requests. This year, the IT department welcomed two interns from Tri-C, um, and Ohio Means Jobs recently produced a video spotlighting those young men. Um, I'm going to tee up or have Kathan tee up a video 
uh, that shows this work because it represents not only um, goal five, but it also represents um, it also represents our our opportunities that we're providing students to grow. Hi, my name is Paul Hospitar. And my name is Roshan Redmond. And we're here at the Cleveland Heights University Heights School District IT Department. Where we work on a day-to-day -day basis as IT interns coming from the Tri-C ATA program. So we're going to show you a bit about our day-to-day -day life. Desk. That's where from this person's work. Whenever whenever parents or even teachers come in that have issues with their Chromebooks, that's where they stop first. They assess what's wrong, and then it would come over to us or the technicians, dependent on what the issue is. And I've actually been shadowing and learning how to assist with parents and students coming in or staff members <laughs> to try and get their devices, maybe a loaner out, anything handled as quickly as and comfortably as possible. First things first, this is our primary workstation. We sit across from each other so we can collaborate on a lot of projects. For computers, we actually just use these Chromebooks and through this USB-C cable, it connects it to the monitor. We get the keyboard, mouse, all the essentials. So these are all the parts that we use to save costs rather than scrapping the entire Chromebook and getting a whole new one. We take these parts that we've put together here and just replace broken parts. So these are batteries, speakers, touchpads, motherboards, palm rests, keyboards, hinges, daughter boards, and back covers. Hundreds. These are the newer model, which the students are actually using. We have so many of those over there, actually, because they're not really using them anymore. But we actually, I'd say about half of those are from our efforts, which is kind of jarring to look at now. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then once the Chromebooks come in, we'd have them taken out and whenever they're going to be given to a new student they go into these cases here which I am quite a fan of and set now ready to go so I plan to move on to a bit of networking and cybersecurity. The more I learn about it, the more interested I become in it. And Mark actually has allowed me to sit in on some of those meetings. Uh, he's our infrastructure specialist. And I plan on getting my Network Plus certification and then security down the road, as well as going back to Tri-C and getting my associates. And then for me, um, following getting my A plus certificate, I do plan to get more into the hardware repair because I really enjoy sitting and just pulling apart these Chromebooks, learning what part does what, learning how it works on a whole, and just the overall being able to pull it apart from scratch and being able to put it together. So I definitely pursue something more in the tech support, con like continue being a tech support specialist and just being able to work with the hardware aspect of it. It has been an absolute pleasure working with Paul, and not only Paul, but the team has definitely made us feel like family here. Oh yeah. It's not just, we don't just feel like, oh, we're just interns here, we generally do feel a part of the team. As yeah. Paul said, they pull us into meetings, you know, they'll run stuff by us, they'll discuss, and anything that they do, they teach us so that we're learning while we're working as well. And the environment on a whole has been really nice and just being able to interact with the students. And the thing I personally love about being here is just the ability to be helping students, you know? Yeah, you really see where you're making the difference. Even like repairing those Chromebooks, we're told why it matters and how it's gonna be helping the families in this community. Mm -hmm. So thanks for coming, seeing what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, and remember to like and subscribe. And stay curious. great to be in a district where we provide uh, folks an opportunity to grow um, and so it's wonderful to see this at work in our own district and even this summer uh, through a partnership with Youth Opportunities Unlimited we will be able to offer our students an opportunity to work across the district this summer um, in order to learn uh, how we function and to also gain important job readiness skills so we're excited about that so 
As we get ready to end the evening, I want to share some exciting things on the horizon for the rest of the school year. We have on February 24th our inaugural Celebration of Black and Gold Excellence from 2 to 5 p.m. at Heights High School. I see our former past board president, Beverly Wright, in the house. This was her vision last year. And we're excited to, to work on this and see that come to fruition. We'll have entrepreneurs, authors, music, locally owned, black owned businesses, food, and more throughout the month of March, February and March. Each school will also hold their own Black History Month and Women's History Month activities. We are getting ready to welcome our newest Tigers. Enrollment will open very soon for kindergarten on March 1st. And we encourage you to share this information and have interested families visit chuh.org for more information. We have kindergarten information nights happening March 6th through the 14th at each elementary school. Families with little ones getting ready are invited to learn more about the school and can enroll, enroll their child on site at the event. And we'll have more details coming. You may have seen the Kelsey Brothers bobbleheads. Well, those will be um, limited edition, I believe. Um, but if you can, please be in attendance to the Cleveland Cavaliers Heights Schools Foundation night on Tuesday, March 5th, uh, where bobbleheads will um, for early, early fans, early entry fans, um, will get access to a bobblehead. Um, and on May 30th, the Heights High class of 2024 will be graduating, where Deshara went to the wrestling match. But they're very excited about that. We'll be graduating at the Woolstein Center. Um, as before I close, I do want to thank um, my cabinet, uh, the leaders who lead the different departments um, that have, that, whose work we see represented in our goals. So if you're here on the cabinet tonight, can you please just stand so we can recognize you? Thank you all. So we're gonna send you off with an uplifting video. Um, I know if you're like me, Ashan Sims, the 2023 graduate, um, we've shared his, uh, this video clip before, but truly an inspirational young man who is now um, in college. So we wanna share our Heights High success story. You hear a lot about the blueprint, um, and this really represents um, the blueprint for Heights students. Well, okay, you want me to hold? Okay. You guys want us to keep holding? One, okay. Yeah, maybe, are the interns here? <laughs> Where do you guys see me in my future? Ashawn, you have the capability to be wherever you want to be. 
you do so many different things well that it has just created this, this person that's about to go out into the world that has every door open to him. I have no doubt that you will do very well at college. You care so much about the world around you, but you care so much about doing well, you know, with your academics and in sports. You've had acceptances from Yale, and you were so cool about that. I got a full ride scholarship to you. But it wasn't just Yale, it was Harvard, it was Dartmouth, it was, you know, all of these major universities, they wanted Ashana. Not just as an athlete, but as an athletic scholar. You definitely have what it takes to make it at Colgate. The path has been laid, the blueprint has been laid. I'm going to put you on the spot. Talk to me. What's the Heights blueprint? <sighs> Social awareness, academic excellence. You know, extra effort. I ask you that question because you are the true definition of the Heights Blueprint. I'm 100% certain you're going to do great things and impact this world in a positive way. Most people don't think, but high school is a big decision. You know, because that high school will shape you up to the person you're going to be. And seeing everybody graduate on that stage is going to be a blessing. And thank you guys for coming and being a part of my life. Appreciate it. Thank you for being here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we got you. <laughs> My dog. Thank you, Ms. Boy. Oh, thank you. That's so great. Cool. All right, now pay me for being here. <laughs> you should be proud, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. You really should. Real. You really yeah. should yeah. be proud. Yeah. So. So you will be able to uh, capture this. Uh, it will be on our YouTube channel. Uh, I want to thank Cynthia Booker, and we have a student also who is helping us tonight with the videography, Naya Glover. Thank you, Mark, and you, Keith, and your teams also for helping us uh, put this event on. I know you have something tomorrow and on Friday as well, so thank you for continuing to burn the midnight oil. Thank you guys for joining us tonight. And our student speakers, you are wonderful. You are our inspiration. You are why we, why we keep doing this work each and every day. Um, I'm looking forward to amazing things for 2024. Um, and again, thank you all for coming to celebrate and support. Have a wonderful Wednesday evening. Thank you. <laughs>